Hi there guys, here's another Fusion 360 tutorial. Uh, so at the end of the last tutorial, we had some shapes that looked something like this. So we did um, some, some sketches, um, uh, and then we did some extrusions, which are joined, and then we also did a cut extrusion. Um, now, we'll look at some of the other tools that we have at our disposable here. Um, so if we go to Modify, uh, we had a quick look at the fillet tool last time, but we'll take a closer look at that again now. So if we choose fillet, we can uh, select specific edges that we want this fillet to be applied to. Um, so let's say we want to apply it to these edges only. We can select those multiple edges here, and then we can choose how much we want to fillet, the radius. So a fillet is basically where we take an edge and we make it less pointy or less sharp and we turn it into a curve. So if we have a three millimeter fillet, you'll see there we now end up with this rounded edge, only on the edges that we've selected. Um, so three millimeters is good. Now we have some different options here, um, setback. So that basically applies to the corners. So if you look at this corner here, where the fillets meet, we can have something called rolling ball, which basically will round that corner a bit like a, a ball shape, or we can go to a setback, and that um, changes how it is filleted on that corner a little bit. So you can see the two different versions of uh, how the corners are treated there. Um, so that's it, you see we've selected four edges, and we've given them a three millimeter um, radius. And there we go, okay, and that will apply that change that we have just made. Now, uh, there's another tool, which is called a chamfer tool. Um, so if we use that on this other block that we've made here, um, to modify and chamfer. So uh, it's similar to the fillet, but um, this time, rather than curving it, it just um, draws a straight line from point to point across that edge that you've selected. So uh, let's select a couple more edges here. Um, again, we're going to modify. Chamfer will do this edge, this edge, and these two edges down here. Again, we'll go three millimeters. And you'll see how the corner is treated this time. Um, you can change to have equal distance or two different distances. So if we go to two dis distances, you'll see we get some different shape, uh, different angle to the, to the edge here. So we don't, we don't have a, um, equal, um, chamfer you see we don't have an equilateral triangle there anymore but uh, if we go to equal distances you'll see that you will end up then with an equilateral triangle on that corner so it's up to you on how you wish to apply the chamfer now we've done quite a large chamfer here so you see most of our top there has been eaten up but if we change this back to three millimeters we um, get some of that shape back there and uh, that's it then um, if we just go to ok it will then apply that um, chamfer. So now again on our timeline here, if you remember from tutorial one, we can play through and we can see everything that we did and how we actually built this shape here. And we can always roll back to um, before or after specific features have been made. Um, so this is like a timeline of everything that you have done to create these shapes. Um, so at the moment, these are still entered here as bodies, not as components yet. Um, we're still just dealing with bodies for now. We'll look at components in a later um, video. So now we have some um, shape to our um, objects. Uh, we're calling them interesting shape one and two. Um, we now maybe want to um, apply some different textures or look to these. So we can select uh, an object, or we can also select individual faces as well. Um, so but let's start with the whole object, and if we right-click on this object, you see we get a, um, 
another menu come up here and we can change the physical material and also the appearance. So the physical material, if we select that, um, gives us an option for different uh, types of material obviously that this could be made from. Um, at the moment it is in default is steel. So if we were to go to metal, we could choose different types of metal, um, different grades of aluminum, different grades of steel, um, brass, bronze, copper, uh, all different types of materials that we can apply to this. So you could actually then export later on um, a kind of a materials list and you would know if you were sending this to manufacturing, what materials should be used um, to make different parts. So if we were to go with a stainless steel here, uh, it's a different grades of stainless steel, we can drag that onto our object and it will apply it. And you'll see now um, used in the design are these two different um, um, physical materials. We've got steel and we have stainless steel 430. If we also drag that onto this object here, we've now applied it to both of our objects. Um, we could also uh, maybe change one of those objects into gold. So if we drag it onto there, you'll see now we have gold has been applied to this particular object. Or we could change this one to copper and so on. So you can choose various different materials. These are physical materials that the object is made from. Now we may also want to go with something like glass. So we could choose to change this object into glass. Um, We've even got glass which is colored, so we have bronze glass. Um, we could change it into a mirror. So there's lots of different physical materials um, that you can apply here. Obviously, I don't need to go through them all. We can even make something out of air. Um, we can have bamboo flooring. There's all different options that you can choose in here, different types of plastics. Um, so we could make this out of a white plastic, for example. So this is the physical materials, but then we also have something um, called the appearance. So again, if we to um, select our shape and right click and go to appearance, this is slightly different because um, we can begin to apply textures and things to our appearance with this, also luminosity, and um, these are editable. So. Uh, let's say we want to change our uh, thing into some paint. So we could go for powder coat, um, a rough powder coat finish. And you'll see some of these have got little arrows next to them. That means that we still need to download this particular material that hasn't been used before. So if we were to go with a, um, a rough white powder coat, we can hit download on that. Uh, oh, I can't download new materials right now because um, it's actually updating, uh, Fusion 360 is updating their software. So we can only use um, something that we already have. So let's say here we'll go with our paint and we'll go with a glossy red paint. Um, so you see now we've got a difference here between um, materials, uh, physical materials, they look different to a um, basically a finish that we've applied. So this could be steel. Uh, physical material which has been painted with a red enamel finish. So you've got f surface finishes and actual physical materials that the object is made from. And um, these can be edited as well. If we right click and want to go edit, we can choose uh, different colors. So um, we could change the name of this. Well, we could change it to green, for example, and we can change the color. Um, different shades of green here, you've got your RGB values that you can put in and we can also choose the roughness of our finish. Um, so the rougher it is, the less reflective it will be. So we can make the surface rough and we can choose how much reflection we want off of that surface. So we could make it very reflective and um, uh, it's kind of some middle roughness there. If we go to advanced we can also then begin to do other things as well, like we can choose how translucent it is. So you may want to make it more or less translucent. Uh, we can also make it emissive, so how bright it's going to be. We can, we can make this um, into 
to like an, an LED, we can make it something that will actually give off light. Um, we can also uh, add a relief pattern, so we can add a bitmap um, image. We'll get into this uh, later on in some other tutorials where we do um, some texturing, but we can add bumps, uh, bump maps to here which will give us a texture to the finish. Uh, we can also add cutouts, so if there's areas that you don't want to be textured, we can also add those as well. So um, let's go with these parameters here um, that we've got and we'll change that to say green and we go to apply. Uh, so now we have our new material here. Um, and if we go to render And close our appearance. We can see how these materials will look when rendered in uh, real world. So our ground plane, actually, if you remember, if we look at our objects from the front, our ground plane is is down here. That's where the shadow is. Um, we can set up our scene. So we could choose to use an environment. So we might want to go with this, for example. Um, And we can choose whether to have reflections or not on the ground. We can choose our ground plane on or off. Uh, we can change our camera um, focal point. Uh, choose whether we have depth of field on or off. Uh, we can also change our background color. So let's go for a white background. And if we change to environment, we can also then select different environments here. So we could have a photo booth environment, uh, highlights. Uh, we could have skylights. So you can choose where your lighting is coming from. And you can change the position of the light source as well. So you can move that around so you can see how the shadow there and the highlights change as we move the light source around. And then when we're done, you can hit the in canvas render button and it will begin then to render this here in our viewport. And you can choose uh, the number of, of iterations. Um, so that's the quality basically of the render. Um, now, when we've got an environment turned on, you will find that the render takes a little longer than if you just use the fixed light, but you'll get a better quality image at the end. Uh, there's also a cloud rendering service as well, um, which um, can give you, uh, if you're doing a very complex model, you might want to do a cloud render. Because um, as you can see, this can actually take a little bit of time to render on your own um, computer, depending on your computer's power. and um, will depend on, on how long that takes. And when your render is done, you can choose to save it, um, capture the image and save it as a JPEG or, or a PNG file to your computer. So that basically is uh, how we can apply different actual physical materials and surface finishes to our um, basic shapes that we've created here. So I hope that you found this video useful and uh, if you did then be sure to click subscribe so you can see uh, other videos that we're making here on our um, basic introductions to uh, Fusion 360. And um, in the uh, notes below this video you'll also find um, links where you can uh, actually open up this project and look at it yourself or also download the um, project file and open it up yourself on Fusion 360. So thanks very much and I'll see you next time.